I'm Every, just going to wear that jacket. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't realize that you were rustling cattle now. <laughs> this is, <laughs> All right, let's do this. My guest tonight is an Emmy award-winning actor who, of course, played Sam Malone on Cheers, and he has a recurring role on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm not mentioning a million other brilliant things. Currently, you can see him on the NBC series Mr. Mayor, which is hilarious. Please welcome our friend Ted Danson. How are you, Ted? I'm good, Conan. I'm good. Uh, Quickly, before we get started, I decided uh, to wear this jaunty scarf today be honest. Is this working for me or not? You can just, you know, feel free to... It, it is, and you can get away with it because, you know, if I wear it at my age, people think, oh, he's trying to cover his wrinkly neck. You, it's just jaunty. Me, it's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I have a high-def screen. Your neck's looking fine. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I've met some celebrities who definitely need to wear a scarf. We won't go into names. But... Um, I want to mention something to you, which is I'm on my way to work today here at the Largo Theater and to talk to you. And I'm going through my head and I'm thinking every time I've had a, an interaction with you, you've been unfailingly nice and you have that reputation. I think you and Tom Hanks both have it of such sweet guys, such nice guys. And I'm convinced that deep down there's some evil there. There's some there is some satanic evil inside you. I know there has to be. Well, I can't speak for Tom. That could well be. <laughs> it is true for Tom. It is true. For Tom, These... it's true. Yeah. For me, it's more of a case of uh, uh, superficiality. <laughs> I take a very shallow cut on life. <laughs> so you, uh, basically what you're saying is that there's a thin patina of niceness around you with very thin coating. Yeah. You know. I'm, 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 the word for me is charming. Yeah. Now, my wife... My wife is nice. Yes. And nice means and kind means that you tell the truth. You uplift people in a deep, life-changing kind of way. Yep. I will just make you smile in the moment. <laughs> and then you move on. Then be- I move on. Before they can scratch any deeper. Or before they realize I don't remember their name. <laughs> you know? Ted, you don't even know who, who I am right now, but you're doing a great oh, job sorry. of pretending. Mary can always tell when I have no idea who I'm talking to (laughs) because of the the big hug I give them. If you hug them, clearly I must know your name. I wouldn't be hugging you. Right, right. You don't know them. Uh, What do you like, okay, because you are one of the most recognizable faces in the world. Some celebrities are known for being, they kind of have a difficult persona and that keeps people at bay. You know, and uh, and I would think that there that would be a, a great boon to someone who could just I don't know, like a like a Jack Nicholson. You know, where you think he might be a good guy, but you're not sure. So pr- people probably leave him alone. You, on the other hand, I would think people walk up to you all the time because they know you from all these roles where you're very accessible. What you're saying basically is I don't have an ounce of dangerous sexuality in me at all. That's it. That's 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 it it on the nose. (laughs) Well, my my favorite my favorite come up and talk to me uh, was in New York. I was coming out of some restaurant in Soho. It was lunchtime and I was by myself and some guy went, hey, and I turned around to be my charming, shallow self. And he. uh, He looked at me and he said, hey, Ted, you remember that time I watched you on TV? (laughs) You know, it was like, (laughs) oh, okay, maybe maybe I should move on. Yeah. But I gave him, I had this standard thing that it works in airports, bars, you know, wherever, which is I had this generic chortle slash chuckle laugh kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, and it goes like it's very simple. It's just hey, hey, you know. <laughs> yes, it's a bit of a whinny, like yeah. a horse. Yeah. But uh, what it does is it says, "Oh, I'm with you, buddy. You know, I totally get you. Yeah, we're one and the same. You know, it gives all of those things with just a hey, without too much of an expenditure of effort on your part. No, no. Uh, yeah, I have a thing where the thing I get 
when I go anywhere is I'm taller than people think. Even when people know that I'm tall, I'm taller than people think I'm going to be because they're used to seeing me, you know, all these right. years. In the, and, and I think I have the personality of a very small person. And um, so I get all the time, hey, Conan, you, uh, you're bigger than you look on TV. You much, you, you know, and, and you look much smaller on television. And I'll say, you need a bigger TV. And they laugh. And my kids are with me and they'll say, you use that, you use that line. And I'll say, what are you talking about? I have to do, I have to talk to 10,000 people a day. I'm going to reuse the <laughs> line occasionally, okay? I'm going to, it works and I'm going to reuse it. And they're totally like, nope, you've lost my respect. You did that, you did that yesterday at the Burger Lounge. And I'm like, I don't care. It worked there and it worked here. You know what is nice is that you're getting to show on Curb Your Enthusiasm, you're getting to show this side of you where you can be impatient with Larry, you can be, yeah. you can be uh, angry with Larry, you mean. can disagree with Larry, you can be mean to Larry, yeah. and it's appropriate because Larry deserves it, let's face it. Absolutely, and, and I think that's your job. People talk about, you know, are you playing yourself or, or a version of, you know, you have, you're a function, you're not a character on Curb, you're a function, and your function is to drive uh, Larry into a corner until he gets so you know tight that he comes out exploding. Yes, and he comes out more Larry, more inappropriate, more whatever. So that it's basically the same when you go out to dinner with him. You know, you just first off, he's so generous with his laughter in real life. Mm -hmm. A lot of stand-ups aren't that way. Yeah, a lot of stand-ups are kind of no, no, I make the jokes. Yep, kind of thing. He loves you to be funny and loves to laugh at his, his own expense. So you basically, even going out to dinner, you try to find ways, new ways of insulting him and making him laugh, which is pretty much the same thing you do when you go to work. The uh, thing that's weird about Larry that I don't think a lot of people know is that he'll meet you for dinner, but not, <laughs> not at your house or not at his house. It has to be at a restaurant. Yeah. Do you know what the reason is for that? Yes, because he uh, doesn't want to be hemmed in by, uh, you know, societal norms, <laughs> which means when you're invited to dinner, you stay through dessert. <laughs> he, will, you know, he gets halfway through. If he gets any kind of agita, he's up and out. He wants to be. So he can't do it in a restaurant. He can't. We went out to dinner I think it was Woody Harrelson, uh, Pete Farrelly, and myself, and maybe someone else. We're going to meet Larry for dinner. We were all together in the afternoon, and it was, sounded like great fun. So we all get there even a little early. So, uh, and uh, the maitre d' says, "Well, Mr. Uh, you know, David is uh, seated over there," and we we show up, and he is literally halfway through his entree. What? He's already ordered because. <laughs> On a whim, he's decided, I think I'll have more fun if I go uh, call this lady friend I know or yeah. something. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, I don't, he's right, you know, but nevertheless, no qualms about totally blowing off any kind of. Right. He wants to. He knows that in a restaurant he can say, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. And he can do it 10 minutes in, throw in his share and be gone. But you can't do that at someone's house. So no. he's he's got no. the whole thing. He's rigged. stopped going to people's homes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Larry's character is someone who's always saying the wrong thing on his show. You yourself have said that you're prone to a faux pas occasionally. You, Isn't that a great word? Yeah, faux pas. Yeah, it sounds like a faux pas. Yeah, and it it does actually. I used to pronounce it faux pass, and then I realized <laughs> I someone corrected me about a year ago. But uh, yeah, faux pas is a great word, and you seem like someone who, if you did a if you made a faux pas, it was because you were maybe trying too hard to be nice and maybe said the wrong thing. Is that is that where these come yeah. from? Yeah, yeah, it's that whole charming thing, you know. Um, yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, I, I've done a couple of them. Uh, my favorite was pretty much first, uh, first several interview, interviews I did for Cheers. And mm -hmm. it was very heady and exciting. Somebody actually 
ask you a bunch of questions and a, you know, yeah. appeared to be so interested in everything you were saying. So right. I was just full of myself. And it was a wonderful interview and I was charming. And it was around the same time that Dr. Uh, Kevorkian mm -hmm. was doing a lot of uh, assisted suicides. Yeah. And it was very controversial. It was a big and, thing in the news at the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, euthanasia, where you help people pass on. Um, and I, I went through my interview, sailed through, and then he said, one last question. Uh, what do you think of euthanasia? And I went, what? You know, I think they're pretty much the same world over. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just see his eyes. <laughs> I, now I understand everything I need to know about Ted. <laughs> Uh, now you you know we were talking earlier about your your marriage your partner uh, Mary you guys have been together twenty five years now together twenty seven yeah twenty seven married twenty five okay yeah. that's true I forget I've been married nineteen together twenty one um, and I always a couple of years yeah I always forget that you're supposed to add in yes you were with this person for two years before that, why aren't you including that? And so I, I've learned, I've got to add that in. So yeah, but that's very impressive. What do you think is the secret to keeping uh, this relationship going? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, telling the truth. Yeah. Uh, and laughter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you work at it, but we, we kind of made this deal early on uh, we both had been married before and been in relationships. And we, we both, before we met each other, right before, we're basically saying to ourselves, well, we're just not cut out to be right. in a relationship. I right. can mess up anything and da da da. So um, it's kind of miraculous that we found each other, but we both kind of felt like we don't want too much drama yeah. in our life. You know, yeah. we'll do hard stuff. And we've done, we've had four teenagers and three grand kids and life you know life comes at you and so there there is hard stuff but right by and large we kind of went you know let's do let's do 93 percent joyous fun yep. together and we'll do seven percent really hard yeah and we t <laughs> we tend to do that that's a uh, good that's a good formula I, I like i similar i think to what you're saying i have found it helps that my wife and I, we both find ourselves ridiculous. Yes. You know, that there's, we don't, we don't take ourselves that seriously. And to me, that feels like that is the, that is the oil that sort of keeps the gears moving is that, yeah. and, and also, I mean, she thinks I'm absurd and doesn't take me too seriously. And I think like, okay, good. Mary and, has used those exact words. <laughs> she finds me ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Look, to be fair, I, you are. You're, oh, you're no, no, person. I know, but it's great joy for me too. I don't, I'm not defensive about ridiculous and shallow and all of those things. It brings me a lot of happiness. So please have at me. I, I enjoy it myself. Well, I, you know, I did want to mention. I'm, I'm. First of all, very happy that you're doing Mr. Mayor, and I, I almost thought it's almost unfair the team you have behind this show because you're involved and I've always enjoy your work. But then you've got, you've, of course, you've got Tina Fey, you know, Robert Carlock. I mean, this is just like, you've got the, the, the best. Yeah, I was, I didn't think twice. I didn't even, before I even read the script, I was, yes, are you kidding? Right. No, I think wow. if Tina Fey called me up and said, I've, uh, I've written a great crime for you to commit. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> Uh, you're going to go to jail for 25 years, but it's going to be funny. I would do it. I would just be like, especially if you can credit Tina. Yeah, no, no, I'm, working for Tina. <laughs> I'm here. No, I still get to go to jail, but I get to say I'm in jail courtesy of Tina Fey. So yeah. uh, it's on her. Oh, and yeah. you, you must have worked with Bobby Moynihan, who's on our show. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm trying to remember when I'm trying to think about when. Because like you, I've forgotten what I've, I have found the only way I can exist is to, le to delete large chunks of my life. So yes. <laughs> I, from my brain, it's the only way, you know the way they tell you you need to remove stuff from, a, from your computer? 
Yeah. When the great Jerry Orbach uh, passed away, uh. um, I remembered saying, God, I wish I had met him. And someone said, what are you talking about? He was on the show three times. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a delightful time and I have revered him. I loved him. I just, too much. When there's, when there's distance between what you're forgetting, it's excusable. My problem is, you know, at, at a party, in the beginning meeting somebody and on the way, on the way out, you know, going, how do you do? What, how nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> and they went, we met. Five yeah. minutes ago. <laughs> ah. That's when you learn to never say nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah. Great to see you. Or just, hey. <laughs> You're coming across a little high on that one. <laughs> hey. That's more of the Woody Harrelson high that, yeah. uh, that I would expect. <laughs> one of the things I'm enjoying that I can relate to is that your character uh, has a teenage daughter, and so you're trying to relate to her all the time. You use Gen Z, Gen Z slang, and yeah. I can relate. I have a 17-year-old daughter, and I try. Um, I've learned that my attempts, she enjoys the attempts at trying yeah. to relate to her because I'm so wrong so much of the time. The same with my 15-year-old son, but they, they enjoy that, but I think that's a great comedic dynamic for your character. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm 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 late I'm not only oblivious to the the new whatever uh, phrase. Uh, I'm also I when I do come to the party I'm like about 8 or 9 years late. So I'm just starting to say things like, "Oh, snap." And I just love <laughs> it. A, I totally get it. It's a great phrase. Yeah. But it's yeah. not really cutting it anymore. I'm even further behind you. I'm saying, "Word up." Yeah. Word up, which I think is the 80s. Uh, and I'm raising the roof occasionally. <laughs> I'm going the, the other way. I'm, I'm going to be in oh, the late. <laughs> me too. I've become my mother and my father, basically. And you know what? I think we should be uh, challenging them. You know, there should yeah. be, uh, we have jargon, sure. whippersnapper. There you go. You, know, you little whippersnapper. <laughs> Tell me what that is, 17-year-old. Guess what? Ted, no one has said that in your lifetime. <laughs> You're going back to the 1920s now. So, yeah. well, uh, congratulations on Mr. Mayor. Season Thanks. finale airs this Thursday at 8 on NBC. I'm excited for the next season. And uh, Ted, truly, uh, one of my favorite people to talk to. Thank you so much for doing Conan, this. It's a pleasure to be with you. Hope yeah. you're all well. Yeah. And I don't know who put you in that one car garage. <laughs> it does, right? We're we're in a we're in a rental in Vancouver. It's a new build. It, I mean, there's yeah. literally nothing in the shelves. Look at that. You know, it's it's totally blank walls. We had to put our grandkids' uh, little paintings up with scotch tape on the wall. No, it it really does look uh, like you got you went to check out a new storage space and you got locked inside. And Basically, then you just, there's some truth in there. Then you decided, I might as well talk to Conan while I'm here and talk about <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Hey, Ted, my best uh, to Mary and, uh, and to you. Have a good time up in, and, and stay safe. And uh, let's, get, well. let's get through this nonsense. Yeah, take care. Take really care, nice Ted. Thank you. That was spectacular. That was great. Thank you. Bye-bye.